Hello everybody and welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is part three of the coffee cup tutorial series. And in this one we're going to be texturing our coffee cup and making a couple slight adjustments. We're going to be using a procedural node to create some of the textures and we're also going to be using an image texture to create sort of a stencil effect. And what you'll need to do first is you need to go online and you'll need to download a couple things. So you will need to go to texturehaven.com and you'll need to uh, either download this one here, which is what I'm going to be using, and you can download all the maps, or what we're going to be using is the roughness. I know this is kind of a strange one to use for the coffee cup, but it works. So either download the roughness or all maps and try and do a 4K, either JPEG or PNG of the map. And the other thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to go and download and install Inkscape. It's one of the softwares that I talk about in my top seven open source softwares for digital content creators. So if you haven't seen this video, uh, I'm going to throw a card up right now so you can go and review that one whenever you get a chance. But make sure that you have this download and installed as well as the texture here or anything else that kind of gives a surface a scratchy texture. And you can feel free to look on texturehaven.com, uh, cements and things like that tend to work out pretty well. The other thing you're going to need to download is you need, you're going to need to go over to Vecdeasy, which is a, uh, a website that gives you some sort of like free uh, image files for use in Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator if you happen to have that. And what we're going to be using is this texture here, which is a seamless pattern. Pretty much any seamless pattern will work for this, but if you're going to follow along with me, this is the one I would recommend using since it's the one I'm going to use. So you can do the free download here. It says attribution required, which I will give the attribution in the comment section below. So thank you to this user here for installing this. And um, just make sure that you just click that free download. You'll have to wait for an ad or something like that. If it tells you you have to sign up, just cross out or close that window and try it again and you should be able to download this completely fine for free so um, you don't have to actually do a sign up and login or anything like that for this website. So once you have that downloaded and saved onto your uh, computer wherever you happen to put it we're going to go ahead and get this texture ready to use right now so that we don't have to worry about it too much uh, when we actually start to add the textures. So open up Inkscape and you're just going to go ahead and open up that SVG. And I've sort of renamed it to Petunia for Demo. But this is basically what it looks like when it first opens up. And if you don't know anything about Inkscape, that's totally fine. We're going to do this pretty painless and easy so that uh, you don't have to do too much in here. If you left click and drag this larger color field here, you can see that it's just a big sort of like pink color. So once we have that selected, just hit the delete button. And that should be gone. And all that we're left he with here are these outlines. So if you left click and drag across the entire image here to select all of these, and you're going to go over to where it says fill, and, or down here in the bottom left, and just click on the black. And you'll see that it just filled in all of this shape here with a black. Then we're also going to do the stroke, which is the outline shape around everything. And we're going to use that to control the width because right now this is a little bit too thin. This is basically going to be the stencil for our image. So if you go over here next to fill, you'll see stroke paint. So click that, click on this solid or flat color one here. And then you'll see that it, it will fill in with a color. And you'll see down here in the bottom left, it's black. And if you don't see that, just click either type in these this information right over here in these boxes. So 0, 0, 0, and then 255 for the alpha to make sure that it's an actual, um, you know, full on and it's not a transparency. And then what we'll do is go over to stroke style. And you can increase or decrease this to change the thickness of your line. I'm going to leave it at this for now, uh, just because that's what it is. Um, you can click the up arrow here to increase it uh, to a 0.365, but I do think that the 0.265 is going to work just fine. So I'm going to change that. And now we're ready to export this. So what you want to do is open up the little box that says export PNG image, and you're going to go to page, and you can go up here as well, file 
and then export PNG image and it should open up this little box. So you're going to go to the whole page. Make sure you click this here because I often will accidentally have the drawing selected and it will just uh, do whatever is in the drawing, which happens to be the full page, but it's good to be in good habits. So we're going to click page. And then you'll see here the width and the size. And right now it's at 96 DPI, which is completely fine. And the width is at 1400 by 980 height. So this will work actually fine for what we're doing. If we were doing a really fine detailed one, we might up the resolution here, but this should be fine. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click here where it says export as. You're gonna to navigate to your folder, wherever you're saving these. So for me, uh, and you might wanna make your own folder for this like I did. So I'm just gonna, Put it there, and you're going to name it whatever. I put it as, um, you know, Petunia Fix, which I'll just overwrite this. Um, I'll just call this 2. So Fix 2, just to make sure that we keep it separate. You'll want it to be a PNG, because that's what it's just automatically going to be. And you'll hit Save. Now, that's not the end. You actually have to, and this is what I always forget as well, right here on the right, it says Export, this little uh, checkbox. Click that, and now it's exporting. I always forget that and I wonder what happened to my PNG and it's because I didn't click that button. Okay, let's hop inside of Blender and you'll see this is the cup that we ended with on the last tutorial part. And what we're gonna do is we're basically going to use uh, this as a guide for where we're gonna place certain textures. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna make this texture right here, this sort of like uh, speckled ceramic texture. The white one is the easiest, but we'll do that later. Right now we're gonna focus on creating this sort of speckled uh, texture right here. So we're gonna start with the one that we called ceramic before, which is all of the white stuff here, all of these white parts. And what we're gonna use is what's called a procedural node to create this sort of speckled look. And how we do that, if we sort of minimize this, um, you can, Let's actually go into the shading tab here to do this so that it's a little bit easier. So let's jump into shading. So once we go into the shading tab, this is what it will look like and you can zoom in and out. And what we're gonna do before we actually begin anything, we're going to turn on an add-on. So go to preferences, edit preferences, go to add-ons and do a search for what's called Node Wrangler. And you'll click this little checkbox here to turn it on. And that's just going to help us with some shortcuts and hotkeys so that everything um, works a little bit faster for us. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the screencast keys. And they're right down over here. They're right over here. And I also have the keyboard and mouse down in the bottom left so you'll be able to see everything that I'm doing. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with that... Uh, with that pattern. I'm gonna open up the image over here. Let's actually change this, hit cancel. Let's go to image editor and we will click on this right here. So we can have this as sort of a reference while we're working. And what we're gonna do is something really quick here and it's just to create a sort of like easy node setup and this will work with the node wrangler. If you click on this principled BSDF here and you hit Control T, it's gonna to start to create some image texture stuff already. And all I really did this for was to quickly create this texture coordinate here and this mapping node. The image texture we really don't need because we're not gonna use that right now. So go ahead and hit X to delete. And then we're gonna hit Shift A to add, go down to texture, and then we're gonna bring up the Musgrave texture. And from here, we're gonna take this texture coordinate, we're gonna go from the object, put that into the vector, and then take this mapping node and put that into the vector here. Then, and make sure again that you have Node Wrangler turned on, you're going to Control Shift, left click the Musgrave texture. And what this does is it sort of pops the Musgrave texture into a viewing mode so that we can actually see what it looks like without uh, piping this into anything else. And you can do that from pretty much any node that you select. So if I select the mapping node, or uh, sorry, control shift, left click the mapping node, you can look at something through there, which looks really weird. Or you can do the same thing here, control shift, left click the principled BS BSDF, and you can jump right into there. 
So let's go back to the Musgrave. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to sort of mimic this speckled look here. We're not so much concerned about the coloring. We're just concerned about the texture. And how we can do this is making sure that the object is put into the mapping node and the vector is put into the vector uh, input here. You can increase the scale by left clicking and dragging. And you can see that that pretty much makes the texturing that we're kind of seeing here. And you can make it as small or large as you'd like. I think somewhere around here is OK. And the detail here and the dimension and all that really isn't going to do much except for just change how some of this looks. And I don't think that we want anything like this because it's not quite as clean as what would actually come out of this sort of creation of this texture here. I think that it would be something more like this here, kind of like the default settings. It just looks a little bit nicer. And the um, lucranarity is not really going to help us out too much here. Um, you can see that as you change it, it does some pretty wild stuff. But I think leaving this kind of at the defaults is really going to be the best thing for us on this particular procedural texture. And you can zoom out and zoom in and change the scaling on this if you like, just to get that set the way that you think looks correct. So I think something around here. So 106, and then detail 13, and then the dimension and lucanarity is somewhere around 2. And I think that looks pretty good. Now what we want to do is we want to colorize this. We want to make this look more so like the blues that we're seeing here. And again, very easy. We can just hit Shift A, go to Converter, get out the color ramp, take the factor, put that right into here, and then Control, Shift, left click through that. And we're going to add some colors here. So if you have a, uh, a set of images or if you have um, some color swatches or something like that that you've put in this window, you can use this feature here, where if I click the flag, so black here, I click here and then go to the color picker. I can go to the darkest value, which is this one right here. Actually, let's zoom in a little bit more because I think I missed it. Get the more dark value there. And then the white one, we can go into here and then select the lighter value and maybe make a middle one here, move it over to the left a little bit, and then choose something like a middle value here. And you can click and shift these color flags around to get the color you think is more so matching what we see here. And again, this is a very low resolution image, but that's OK because um, this is pretty much what I think the texture would look like anyway. Now with that done, simply left click and drag the color into the base color here, and then Control Shift left click the principled BSDF. And now we have a sort of color texture that goes right there. Now with this done, we could kind of move on to add our metal shapes and everything else, but I don't think that this is really quite going to cut it as far as making this a very nice detailed cup. We want this to look a little bit vintagey, a little bit maybe aged, and we want it to be more of what's called a PBR or physically based rendering, which has more realistic textures and stuff like that to make it look really, really nice. So what we want to do is we want to start to create what's called a roughness map. So we're going to keep this actually up here. I'm just left clicking and dragging this. And I'm keeping this mapping just like this as it is for now. And there's kind of a reason for that. But let's hit Shift A here. And we're going to add a texture, image texture, right here. And then we're going to navigate to that uh, texture that you downloaded. So I downloaded the aerial ground. Is it aerial ground rock, I believe, is what I told you guys. Let's take a, take a quick peek. Aerial ground rock. And if I go over here, I can choose the thumbnails. And we're going to use this one right here, this roughness, OK? Because uh, it's a black and white value, which is going to work. This one actually works pretty well for this particular project. So if I double click on that and I look through it with uh, Control shift left click, you can see that it doesn't really show anything right now. And that's because if this is not plugged into anything, as far as the vector here, it's actually going to use what's called the UV. 
And we haven't UV unwrapped this yet. And we're going to do that later for people who want to do the UV unwrapping and bake, uh, baking out the textures. But basically what we need to do if we're not using a UV unwrap, we need to tell the uh, this node here how to wrap this image around our object. And we can do that fairly simply here. So if we take this mapping node, and I'm going to... I'm going to hit Shift and D to duplicate this. Then take this object uh, output here, plug that into the mapping, and then take the vector here and plug that into this one. You can see that it's now doing something else. It's going, it's taking basically the object information and it's mapping the image to it. Now the problem here is that it looks kind of stretched. You can see that it's sort of like pulled up in this other direction. And you could use this method to wrap the image texture around the object, but what makes uh, Cycles and Eevee so nice as far as the procedural texturing of images, which is what we're doing here, we're using the object data to map the image texture here. And one really quick thing to make sure that you've done, if you've scaled this in weird ways or whatever, just hit Control A and then click on Scale to apply the scale. You want to make sure that you do that because uh, there might be some weird stuff going on that's taking the object. Basically, if you have a scaling on the Z or anything like that, it's going to scale it incorrectly. Okay, so make sure you apply your scale. So if we want to take this image and we want to wrap it around our object in more of like a box fashion, what you'll do here is go to your image texture and then where it says flat underneath linear here, where it says flat, go to box. And that's going to wrap it more consistently over the whole object. Now, this looks pretty good for mine. And I know that it's going to work out pretty well in the future when we start doing other stuff to it. But if you feel like the image is too pixelated, so let's say that it looks something like this, so it's really pixelated here. You can take the scale here, and you can, um, if you hit left click, or um, if you left click and drag down, you can select all of these and put in a two, and sort of map it more, uh, take the tile and map it more if you'd like to. But I think that one actually works out pretty well for this particular object. Now, if you find that the thing you're using is not seamless, it is not a seamless texture and you're seeing some of the edges, you could try to use the blend here and increase that to try and blend the edges. But since this is a seamless texture, there's really no issues that I'm seeing here. So it's actually going to work. Actually, I do see a little issue down here in the bottom. So let's go ahead and actually crank that up a little bit to get rid of that. We shouldn't see it in the end, but I'm going to do it anyway. So next, what you're going to want to do is we're going to need to use this to map our roughness. And um, I'm not going to do a full breakdown of what all of this stuff is. That's more covered in my beginner's series with basic geometric objects. But basically, for a object to be considered more of a PBR or physically based rendering, there's other maps that need to be applied to this object in order for it to look more realistic. Right now, it just looks really flat. It doesn't seem very realistic. It's just, you know, a color with just some basic stuff here. As far as the uh, roughness here, we can take it down. And if you sort of move around, you can see that it is shiny. But it's just not quite there. It's just not quite the look that we really, really want. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go and add a converter color ramp. We're going to take this color pop it into here, then take this color and we're going to put it into the roughness right here. Now we didn't see, you don't see too much that's different, but if we take this black here and left click and drag it, you can see that now we are controlling the roughness of this edge and it's a little bit more uh, uneven. It's not consistent throughout the whole thing, which makes it more realistic because objects don't get worn consistently in the same exact spot over and over. And what we're going to do, along with adding this roughness map here, is we're going to add what's called a clear coat. And the clear coat, if I click and drag this up, it basically adds a layer of shininess over the top. So there is a roughness under, and there's a shininess over the top. And I'm going to end up just using the same roughness map 
for these two uh, roughnesses here, for the clear coat and for the regular roughness here. But you're more than welcome to change this image to something else, to change how it's being, um, how the roughness is behaving. It's really up to you. So you can feel free to play with this, move this around as much as you want. You can change how rough it gets here by changing the color for both of these, if you want you know, it kind of be rough uh, throughout, or if you want it to be more shiny, it's really up to you on how you want to do that. And I'm just going to pipe this right here into the clear coat roughness down here. And just sort of play with those values until I get something. And you want to move the camera around a bit so you can really see like this here. So you can really see how it's shaping up. And to me, I think somewhere around there is looking all right. So I think that's going to do it for this particular uh, material. I think this looks pretty nice, and we don't want to just go overboard all the time with our projects. And uh, baking out will be a little bit easier since we only have a couple different textures here that we're going to be baking out. And overall, I think this is looking you know, pretty nice for our first texture. Now the next one that we're gonna tackle here is actually gonna be the white ceramic on the inside, since we're basically gonna take some of the same nodes here that we used, particularly this setup down here, and we're just gonna apply that to the center. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over to the Material Properties tab, and we're actually gonna change this because this is called ceramic. We wanna call this something like ceramic underscore blue or blue ceramic or whatever it is that you'd like to call it. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another material. So we're gonna click the little plus. We're gonna go here and we're gonna pick the ceramic blue. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this button right here that says new material. And what this does is it basically adds a new slot where we can rename this to ceramic white. And then basically unplug this right here and right now it didn't do anything, but we're gonna apply this to the areas that we want it to be white. So go into edit mode up here with tab, and you're just gonna select the areas that you want to become white. So I just uh, loop selected these faces here. So I went to face select, I held alt and then uh, left clicked, and you can shift and box select and just take the areas that you want to turn into a white ceramic, highlight those, then go over here and make sure that this material is selected and click Assign. And now we have a white material for this ceramic here, and then we have the colored material for the ceramic on the outside. What you can also do here is you can just go ahead and delete these items in here for the white ceramic since we are not going to be using those and it sort of simplifies our node structure here. And then we're gonna move on to doing the metallic part. So with the metal, what I would actually recommend doing since we're gonna basically use this same scratchy material here to create the little imperfections on the surface for the, for the metal, you could use something different but I think it's easier just to keep things um, you know, use the same image if you can, just to keep things simple. I'm gonna box select all this, hit Control C, go over to the metal part, Control V to paste it, and now we're going to start adjusting our metallic texture here to make it look a little bit more like what's in the image here. So to begin with, what we need to do is take our principled BSDF and make sure that the uh, metallic is turned on, so if you haven't done that yet, make sure that you do that. And then for the base color here, we're just going to hit the little eyedropper and then select a kind of a middle point or a brighter part of the shine on this particular reference object here, or reference image. So if we click on this here, wasn't quite what I was expecting, so let's actually click a darker area, maybe somewhere here, and that's a little bit closer. I don't really like the way that this yellow is in this image. You could, um, you know, get one that was closer to it or, you know, select a color that was closer to it, but it's a little bit too kind of like, I don't know, dark for me. So I'm just gonna click on, let's say this one here. That's actually pretty good there. So if you want the RGB value or the hex value, I'll go here. You can take that code right there and 
copy that in if you'd like. But basically, just pick one that you think is going to match what you, you'd like to see. If you want to make it look exactly like that, you can. But, you know, I have a preference too, which is not to look exactly like that particular color. And the roughness map will change how this is being reflected. The next thing we want to do here is we're going to want to take this uh, sort of scratchy texture here that we're using for the roughness and pipe that into the roughness map here. And you can see that once we do that, it does change how everything is starting to look. It really does look worn. It looks like somebody maybe took some sandpaper to it or something. So you can see the more shiny bits here, and you can see the more rough bits here. And you can control that by moving these sliders, changing your white value here to something else so that it doesn't seem so worn, if you'd like. See, that looks a little bit more like this one here. It's a little bit more rough. And you can also add some flags and change the overall appearance as much as you'd like, just like that. One more thing we're going to do for the metal is that I'll, oftentimes metal will get scratched and there should be a little bit of like raised abrasions and stuff like that. So we're actually going to add, so Shift A to add, go to Vector, Bump, and we're going to add a little bit of a sort of bumpy surface to this. And if you take this image here, Left click and drag the color, put it into the height, then take the bump here, the normal, and put it into normal. You'll see it kind of looks junky to begin with, but that's because the strength is really high and also the distance is kind of high. The distance should be pretty low since this is a small object. So let's put a, let's say a 0.1 here for now, maybe even a 0 0.01. And then for the strength, let's put this at a 0.1 and that's going to help us out with that a little bit. So we have a little bit of these sort of raised imperfections here, just like that. And it's not too um, distracting where it's like just like popping out because it's just so strong and everything. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, of course, you can make this even lighter by putting this at a 0 0.01 or something like that and making it look more smooth like the one here. But I really wanted this to look a little bit more vintagey. So adding a little bit of these imperfections really helps to make it look worn. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to create this sort of stenciled look that will add a metallic surface over some of these wedges of our cup here. And that's pretty simple. It's basically a mixture of what we've done on these two, uh, the metal and the ceramic blue, uh, these two materials here. And it's going to be using that image that we downloaded earlier and created a stencil for using Inkscape. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to go over here, add a material slot, click the little drop down. And for this one, we're going to actually select the um, ceramic blue. And then go over here and make sure you click on new material so you don't mess up what you already had. And we're going to change this to ceramic and metal. And this is going to be a really fun thing to show you guys. So before we actually create something with this, we need to apply this new texture uh, or new material to the areas that we want it to look like. So go into edit mode. And you're just going to select the areas that you want the stencil to be applied to. So I am going to put it, as it shows here, the area that's next to the handle, so not this one here. So I'm just going to go around, and it's probably easier in solid mode. I'm going to select all of these faces here, holding shift, left-clicking. Oops, not that area there. We're going to skip and do this for every other face or every other side, I should say, just like that. So every other side. And make sure that you click on the ceramic and metal and click the button that says Assign. OK, let's go back into Material Preview. And let's just, using, make sure you have Node Wrangler installed, let's just uh, Shift and Control left click. And you can see that now, every other set of those faces now have a different texture on it. And I'm going to go ahead and control shift left click through this one here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our metal material here. We're going to go over to our metal material. We're going to left click and drag to select all of this. Hit control C to copy. 
go back over to the ceramic and the metal uh, material here. We're going to hit Control-V and hit G to grab and move it up here. So now we have up here, we have the metal, and down here, we have our ceramic. So what you could do is you can actually add what's called a frame. So if we go to Add, Layout, Frame, and you put it here, and then you left click and drag this out like that. And then if you grab your nodes here, you can kind of hit G and move it around a little bit, left click, and it will put it inside this frame. If you open this up here, you can call this metal. Oh, actually, in the label part, call it metal. And there you have metal there. You can change the color if you want, you know, maybe to a gold color or whatever it is that you want to just keep track of your areas here. So this is really if you only want to do this. Um, it's a good practice. So I'm just going to do this again. Add layout frame. I'm going to make this bigger just like this. And then grab all these. And pop it down in there and call this ceramic. Okay. And maybe I'll make this a blue color just to be similar. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a mix shader or add a shader uh, mix shader. So go and put a mix shader here. And this is obvious that this is something that you would do is you'd want to mix this top one and this bottom one here together. But if we control shift and left click through there, it's basically either one or the other. So you can see that really nice metal texture that we have there, but it's not doing anything else. It's just kind of going between the two. And what we need to do is we need to use a black and white value and pipe it into this factor here in order to create that uh, this look here where you have sort of this stencil effect. So we're gonna do here so that we can make that stencil effect is we're gonna hit Shift A. You're gonna go to Input, Texture Coordinate. You're gonna hit Shift A and we're gonna add a vector uh, mapping, okay? And we're gonna take object information and put that right in here. Then we're going to hit Shift A to add a texture, image texture, and pipe that right into there. Then for the image texture, we're going to open, and you're going to navigate to that texture that you created or that we saved out earlier. So let me find it real quick. Here it is, Petunia Fix underscore 2. And if we look through here, it looks like it's nothing is there. So control shift um, left click, it looks like nothing's there. But if you do it one more time, you'll look through the alpha. And there you're going to see the alpha channel for the image that we outputted. And it looks all weird. And that's because we have this here set to flat. So go to box. And now we have the flower pattern that we had uh, exported. And you can change the scaling here. If you go and you change this to a 2, you can have it even more, or to a 0.5. You can have them larger. And if you didn't like the thickness of how this looked, you could go back into Inkscape and export out a new one where you change the thickness of those lines. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to take this alpha here, and you're going to pipe that into the top part of the factor on your mix shader. Then, if you view through the mix shader, you will see that we have this effect here. And you may be wondering why it looks like this and not like this one here. And that's really because we need to invert the black and white value from this in order for it to register correctly. Now you can just swap these one over the other, but I don't want to do that because then we'll have to move these. So if we go in here, shift A, search for invert, put that right in here, and now we have it inverted. And these lines are a little bit small, so I'm going to really quickly go back into Inkscape and export out a new version of this that's going to have a little bit thicker of lines. So I'm going to hurry up and do that. I'm not going to show you those. I'm not going to show you how I do that because 
I think that it's pretty obvious on how you can do that. Okay, so here's what it looks like with the setting like this here. So I put a 0.765 to the stroke style. So all you'd have to do is left click and drag, select everything, change that to this one or make it larger if you'd like. But I think this is looking pretty good. And there you have the stencil effect on the outside. And if you notice down here at the saucer, if you've made the saucer already, that is the inverted look. So if you took it here and you change this invert to a zero, that's what it would look like on the saucer. Let's change that back over. So let's go back over to the layout view here and take a look at what we've done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, I'm going to save this and I'm going to change the view to the rendered view. And we're going to add an environment texture to the background so that we can kind of see what's going on here a little bit more and change a couple settings really quick inside of the render engine. So I'm going to go over here to the world settings. I'm going to change the color here to environment texture. Open. Go to where I've saved HDRIs. And you should have some of these if you did my tutorial series for the basic geometric shapes. And if you don't, you can go to HDRI Haven and they'll have a whole bunch of these. And we're just going to put it on this Simon's Town Rocks 8K here. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And there we go. So at this point, I might want to go in and change a couple settings, uh, move a couple of the sliders around a little bit. And I just noticed something that we forgot down here at the bottom. And we need to add the white ceramic to the bottom. So if we go into edit mode here, select all of this like that, and then go over to our materials, click on ceramic white, assign, and now we have the bottom set to that ceramic as well. And that's pretty much what we're going to do with the materials. The one thing that I'm going to recommend is if we look really close at this here, as we're kind of cruising around, it looks like this kind of like goes right flat into the cup and it's just kind of, I don't know, a little bit blasé for right now. And what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, you can do this if you'd like or not. I'm going to add a loop cut, control R, add a loop cut here, right click to set it. I'm going to uh, make sure that edge is selected here. Select this edge, I'm going to scale that up a bit to make that a little bit more like a bump is coming out. It's a little bit more realistic like that. Then at the bottom here, I'm going to do the same thing. Control R, add a loop, grab this loop here, scale it out a bit, maybe grab this one as well and scale that on, uh, scale that there, and maybe grab and pull it down a little bit on Z, just to change the shaping, just to give it a little bit more realism. This is really how I like to build. I'm more of like an, a traditional artist when I do my sculpting and everything. I like to see what the materials sometimes look like on the object before I start to add some more of the details or changing or change some of the things. So for example, if I look at the reference material up here in the top right, and then I look at this here, this is a little bit thick. So I might go in, grab these edges here, just like that. And then up here, change this to individual origins and hit S to scale. And that's just gonna scale on the, all their own origins just like that and thin that handle just a bit more, just to give it a little bit more elegance. So that's gonna be it on this particular part of the tutorial. In the next one, we're going to go into how to render this out. And then after that, we're gonna go into how to bake these textures out so that you can use them inside of a gaming engine or if you're gonna use them for a Radeon Pro render or anything like that, I'm gonna show you the really quick basics on how you can bake out all of your textures and get this to look really, really nice for whatever engine you're looking to use this particular object for. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.